So, uh, hello. Um, today we're going to be talking about sort of rethinking the render theme layers. Um, this is, this is, we're not going to actually be presenting the way it should be. This is going to be a huge discussion because um, one of the things that we've seen is there's, there's actually an issue on Drupal.org right now in the issue queue that is a huge, long, uh, sort of semi-rant, semi-informational uh, uh, thread about the pain that Drupal 7 themers are feeling. Um, and this all has to do with the complexity of our current system with uh, the uh, theme and the render API together. Um, some of you have seen this slide before. I gave it at, at DrupalCon San Francisco before Drupal 7 was released because I, I had a feeling this might be a problem uh, for people to sort of grok the theme system. Um, I said it's a simplified, it, it really is a simplified version. It's actually a lot more complicated than this. Um, but all the parts are there. Um, basically, the, from a code standpoint, the reason why we are where we are is because we had a, a theme system in Drupal 6 which was great, but lacked a little bit of flexibility as far as having sort of granular control over um, theming a particular piece and not some other pieces. So you're basically doing sort of field-based showing and hiding sort of on the fly based on conditions because it was rendering things to strings. It was rendering our content to strings a little too quickly. So in Drupal 7, the solution that uh, we ended up with was adding render API into the system. And the render API and the theme API are completely different systems and they didn't really mesh that well in my opinion. Um, so that's the sort of the fundamental problem space. And uh, we, so uh, if you look at the, uh, the node for this particular discussion on uh, Denver's website, there's a link to the particular issue where uh, themers went through with that. I believe Sun started the, the issue, didn't you? Yes, yeah. So Sun started the issue and then it just kept going and people were, uh, ended up being really useful and, and Alex and I went through and read through all that stuff and, and we're trying to figure out some, some good ways to maybe s solve those problems. Um, and I, w I wanted to sort of summarize um, the three sort of top problems that uh, people were complaining about in that issue. Um, that was uh, consistency, um, also consistency and consistency. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the theme system, uh, because it's so flexible and powerful, there's like eight different ways that you could possibly render a particular piece of content. And from a, a theme developer who's coming to the system and goes, okay, I know I wanna do like, what is this comment field? How is this comment field being rendered, right? So that, the way that it's rendered is different from the way, the way like links are rendered, the way that, that uh, you know, a, a user uh, profile is rendered. This all done subtly differently whether so a particular variable that's in a TPL can either be a render element that gets rendered using the uh, render function, or it could just be a string at that point, or um, you know we've got uh, Drupal attributes. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to, from, from the theme developers to figure out to, because there's so many different ways it could be, and it, ends up they have to do a lot of sort of, you know, print var and, and, and using, getting to debuggers, and this is really uh, pretty difficult for a lot of theme developers. So, you wanna? Nope. Yeah. Cool. Alex, yeah, Alex also went through and, and sort of took notes on this, and um, I didn't make any slides based on your notes, but, but do you wanna comment about other things that we saw? in that issue? Um, other than consistency, or to say Well, I mean, uh, other things besides consistency. I wanted to say that's the like number one thing, really, but. Yeah. Um, actually, not at this time. I want to see the rest of what you have to say, and then maybe comment <laughs> later. <laughs> We're co-presenting, come on. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you think? Uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> this is my last slide. <laughs> I don't have anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? <laughs> that's, all, that's all the slides I have, because I wanted this to be discussion, really. Um, so f first off, um, those of you who haven't been 
those of you who haven't necessarily been in that issue, if you wanted to comment about the, those things, that'd be a good place to start right now. Hi. I think one thing that drives me crazy is that we're thrown all sorts of markup that's deep, 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 deep in the code. And uh, Core does this, Contrib does this, some modules do it better than others and give you nice TPL files. But what I find most aggravating is just how we're thrown stuff and it's just sort of deal with it. Um, that you don't really get to build your page like you would if you were prototyping a page. You're basically throwing a bunch of stuff and then you just need to shag all, the, all of it, you know, hope, hope that it doesn't all get through. And that's a big frustration because we're handed a lot of problems that really happen before the theming even really, before the theming layer we're really actually dealing with it and we end up having then to override so much that is sort of assumed. And that's one of my big frustrations. And I know that it goes deep into the Drupal architecture, but anything that we can do that helps give us more control over that would be a big win. Oh, thanks for that. Um, has, our, has anyone here seen Jacine's blog post from, was it yesterday? Um, where she talks about sort of componentization of the, of the theme system? Actually, I wanted to pull that up. What's the, does it, is it I'm like, Um, <laughs> so, so Jacine spent the last, like, I mean, you know, several years thinking about this problem and uh, s about six weeks or so uh, coming up with an idea. Um, so, you know, one, one thing is consistency and uh, one thing that I did last week was in the issue queue, I, I opened up about six or seven issues that I just tagged, uh, assigned to the, com to the theme system component and tagged with consistency. So those are like things that you know can just be solved now. You know, I mean, they, some of them require a lot of work, but they don't necessarily require a lot of like consensus building. They're pretty obvious. Like, yes, this is better. Write the code. The patch will get reviewed. Um, you know, some low-hanging fruit. Uh, Jacine, uh, her idea is, uh, I think, sort of more revolutionary, but very cool, which is instead of having you know hundreds of theme functions in core, and then another several thousand, depending on how many contrib modules you enable to kind of reduce it to a set of standardized uh, formats and components uh, that's like a manageable amount. And then, for example, when like the book module needs to uh, output the book navigation, that it doesn't need to define a new template to do that, that it can sort of use a standardized component like list or tabs or stuff like that. And to have a consistent data structure between those things so that there's maybe like one hook that a front-end developer could use to say, you know, instead of using tabs, use this other kind of component, but the data structure is the same, and, and suddenly, you know, your book navigation is outputting something in a different way, but that there's a small number of components that actually output the markup. So if what you want to do in your theme is, you know, really kind of hand control all of the markup that's output, you know, you don't need to override 400 functions. You can override, you know, maybe 20 or 30 or hopefully less. So I think it's a great idea, and, um, it sounds like a lot of work, but I think it's something we can do if enough of us feel like we want to do it. Yeah, the, the component idea was, was I, I was actually thinking along the same lines, sort of, uh, uh, but in a really, really rough way, just like, yeah, that sounds like maybe we should think about that. And then you went and like wrote it all down and like formalized it a lot better. And I, I really love, the, love it, this idea of having a sort of very consistent data structure for um, the particular item that you want to theme. Right, and instead of having like pound type or possibly pound theme inside the whatever it may not be render API anymore, render array, but those are the two options we have right now. So, if we instead had a, a consistent data structure and there was like one little uh, property that we needed to change in order to change it from a list of uh, unordered links to ordered links or into another maybe maybe just, you know, paragraphs or something, you know, you would, just, you would be able to change the way that it's themed just by changing the property of that data structure. I mean, it would be extremely consistent uh, and not like the problems we have now with pound type and pound theme, which are very confusing in a render, renderable array. Um, the other thing I'd say about that is, is Chicks here? Yep. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, and, and, oh, and one other thing is that the problem with Dru Drupal 7 is that with uh, a lot of these theme functions and, and render, render el uh, element info, uh, yeah, sorry, render elements is that they're not nestable, which, is, which seems crazy to me. We have like a list of links, but you can't put things that are also render elements into the list items. They have to be strings, right? <laughs> it's like, well, you, you know, you realize you can put like a whole set of markup inside individual list items, right? <laughs> and the only way you can do it in Drupal 7 now is like creating custom elements uh, with hook element info or possibly just hacking uh, the render element by adding a pound prefix render function to it. <laughs> Um, it's 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 sort of madness, you know. So so having those the the consistent data structure and also nestable um, uh, elements is is really really important. And and again, we're inconsistent about how do you do nesting for the things that actually have nesting. Um, and it should be like the the children should be like one consistent property of you know the element. Go ahead, Chris. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of touch on some of those topics a little bit. But like, I'm just going to kind of posit that render array is like render API sort of failed. Uh, and it failed really, really early because like, we added all of these things like hide and show and all sorts of other stuff to make a themer's life easier when they were actually down in the whole let's create a template and whatever. But the problem is, is that they have to actually render a region before they can tell whether they're going to have that region. And by the time they've done that, hide and show is sort of useless to them because we've rendered the whole thing once already. So, you know, uh, and uh, like these sort of problems emerged really, really early in the Drupal 7 lifecycle. And so we're rendering regions that all the elements in it are access false. Right, so, <laughs> I mean, uh, I think getting rid of the render API at this point is, is probably really up for grabs and, and something that we should seriously consider. Um, uh, insofar as like structured content goes and, and how that stuff might be handed off to theme functions or whatever that ends up looking like, um, I, I think we have a, a, an opportunity here with some of the other core initiatives that are going on to <clears throat> maybe standardize the sort of elements that, that can theme output um, so that you could write to a specific use case and, and change the output of a given block, for example. Um, and, and so there's kind of this notion of, um, of wrappers. You know, what, what am I going to wrap the output of this with? But that same notion could be extended to who's actually going to theme the output of this, right? That, that could easily be done. And so, like, that may come back to the whole, like, if we had a consistent data structure for a given element, or, or a component than running it through a consistent set of theme functions or whatever sits in that place becomes really easy and we can identify those theme functions and even expose them in the user interface so that I say what this runs through. So if I know that it's a list, well, what are all the things that can theme lists? Oh, well, you can have it unordered or ordered or whatever you like. And so I think there's a, there's a real opportunity to consider those things and, and maybe make them real and legitimate here. Um, I'm just kind of throwing that out there, so. Um, let's see, so a couple thoughts on that. Um, so one is I, uh, I do think that, you know, the layouts initiative, and so for anyone who doesn't know, that was Chris, Eclipse GC, who was just commenting, who's the lead of the uh, DA layouts initiative. Um, and one of the opportunities that we have with the layouts initiative is that uh, anything that's happening like at a block level or, or larger, so everything from like the page to, you know, down to the individual block, um, that's not going to use render arrays because of just because of the requirements for edge site include and stuff like that. And also part of what we're still discussing as part of the layouts initiative is how granular do the blocks get? And you know potentially the blocks maybe even get as granular as like a field. Um, maybe not quite that granular, but possibly that granular. Probably that granular. So if we can pull that off, uh, and Chris is confident we can, which is great. Um, then you know that's a huge set of kind of theme functions and sort of themer tasks that become you know configuration driven and you know templates uh, that just you know that arrange sort of layouts of string variables which are our blocks 
And I think that might address some of the kind of like page building um, comment that was, that was mentioned earlier. For stuff that's smaller than a block, so for stuff that's like, like you know, a single field rendering itself or like uh, a set of links rendering themselves, a set of you know, uh, menu navigation rendering itself, um, I think some kind of structured da you know, data structure for representing the rendering pipeline is still necessary. That's my current opinion at this time. Uh, I was just talking with Chicks uh, like half an hour ago uh, and he made the suggestion that maybe we don't want to keep it as arrays. Maybe we want to move to like an object-oriented approach for them since we now have PHP 5.3 and so many other APIs are going object-oriented and so maybe we, you know, maybe using an object-oriented API helps us achieve, you know, some, the same kind of thing we're doing with Render API but maybe in an easier way and it actually could be an easier way for front-end developers because right now, uh, you know, we have like within page.tpl.php we have things like, you know, we're, we're checking if, you know, if a block exists, you know, if, if, a, if a block is going to actually get rendered as anything. Um, but the way we're checking it, you know, kind of has false positives. Um, where, you know, uh, the block will say, yes, there's a block here, so create the sidebar for it. But in reality, when you actually render the block, it renders nothing. So, you know, now there's a sidebar with nothing in it, and that's not what the person wanted. Um, Similarly, the, the whole inconsistency of, you know, when do you say print variable and when do you say print render variable. Um, you know, so using objects potentially gives us the opportunity to make uh, those kinds of things a lot smoother. You know, if you, if you can say if something and evaluate it as a Boolean and we can define what that is, you can say print something and, and there's, you know, object oriented lets you kind of automatically render that to a string behind the scenes without the person writing the template having to say render. So I think there's a lot of opportunities we have there to move to an object-oriented API for the contents of a block. Um, but I think we do have to realize that, you know, we have to make sure that that API really does make things easier for front-end developers, you know. Um, but I think we can do that. Yeah. Let's, let's go through the, the line here. We're getting sure. in the middle here. Great. Um, so I, I'm really encouraged that this conversation is happening. I think it's great. Uh, it's great to know that lots of other people are feeling sort of the pain that I felt over the years. Um, I, you know, as a front-end developer, uh, for most, uh, I work in a number of different CMSs, and for a lot of the CMSs that I work with, uh, you know, when I have a design, I will code it out just sort of in plain straight up HTML and then sort of load those components into the CMS. And in Drupal, I find it's actually generally, it, it's worse markup, but it's more efficient for me to just style the markup that Drupal is generating, because it's a lot of trouble to go through the theme functions and the field templates and all that sort of stuff, and I, I think that it's like there, there's front-end developers and there are Drupal front-end developers. Um, and that, you know, any sort of movement forward needs to sort of recognize, like I, I would argue, uh, needs to lower the bar for how much a, a front end developer needs to know about Drupal in order to modify the Drupal output. And I think that there are a lot of good motives for render arrays and controlling output in a different bunch of different places in Drupal. But what I would love as a theme developer, you know, is a way like in my dot info to set a flag for like suppress HTML tags from fields suppress HTML tags from block content, suppress, you know, like be able to set a bunch of flags in a .info file so that I can just get structured arrays and loop through those in my own loop and throw in my own markup in my templates or something like that. Um, and I, you know, I have zero idea how feasible something like that would be. Um, but it seems to me if, if, you know, if an object-oriented approach is in, you know, in the future that there might be some way to pass flags or, you know, pass an argument to the render function or something like that that controls what exactly render is giving me and I can get rid of some of the crazy markup that, you know, views or panels or, you know, field has, has done that I haven't taken the time to actually override with the theme function or something like that. Um, but I, I don't know how reasonable it is to think about being able to pass things in a .info file or something like that. strip tags, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, and, and, but I think that's also where uh, what I mentioned earlier about the components is powerful because, you know, the reason, you know, views and, and you know, rules and, and, you know, book and all the core modules, you know, output a lot of uh, mark, you know, field, uh, tpl.php, you know, the reason all those things output markup that's not desired is because, you know, there's so many theme functions and, and when the modules are written, they're not written by front end developers and so, you know, a module developer is making some kind of decision on what markup is appropriate here, um, and sometimes it doesn't go through as much of a careful process. Uh, and it's hard to, you know, have like a careful review process for 
hundreds of theme functions and templates. And I think that's where if we can reduce it to a set of standardized components, then we can actually be like, be like okay, so what's the, what's the best default markup we can create for these components? And then the, at least the defaults make sense. Uh, we start encouraging module developers to not type pound markup equals something that has HTML tags. We get okay, away from and that. not create their own theme functions. Like <laughs> they can just reuse the components that are already available in core. Yeah. Um, that way, if there's something wrong with the markup that's in core, maybe we just fix it there, and then boop, it's fixed in all the modules that are using the same components. Yeah. And, and then ideally, at that point, you know, you don't need, I mean, you know, a flag, flags and info files sound, you know, like an interesting idea, but maybe if we do it right, you don't even need that because, you know, we have maybe a set of 10 or 20 component templates, and if you want to strip out some markup or add some new markup, you can just override, you know, a couple files and do it that way, and it's not that much harder than some kind of info file setting. So. Uh, uh, the question was, was the fences module helps with the fences module helps specifically with the field TPL um, in, in making it much leaner and more uh, geared towards the common use cases rather than the worst case use case, which is what uh, Drupal 7 sort of looks at. Um, when we go through and, and sort of make, uh, you know, a, make these components, we should make sure that we're looping in front-end developers, you know, HTML junkies in the process so that as we create these standardized components that there is uh, a, an initial review by, by people who really care about their markup. Um, and I, I believe that there should be um, basically an HTML component, like if there's a specific HTML5 tag that you want to use, there should be a way with, with Drupal and some component where you can get that HTML tag. HTML5 tag. All right, I just want to make sure this discussion, they, um, I was going to go in a different way, so I didn't want to break if we still had ideas about that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm sorry. No, ahead. no, we're good. Okay. So um, I was a little, I, I feel bad because I haven't read this other than what's on the screen. Did, it, did it come out yesterday or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, very few people have read their RSS so, feed the last two days. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so if what I said is actually addressed in there, I, I'm, I'm sorry. But um, so I, I, there's a little bit of a red flag popping up in my head in that a lot of the reason that we've moved to more specific templates in a lot of cases is to provide a granularity of theme ability and that a very generic component, we end up with our theme links or the only way to override the specific theme links is to take the whole theme links function and then scrape out that one instance where this shows up and then change it and only theme it for that case and am I? So, I mean, we, so in Drupal 7 we have suggestions. Uh, I mean, this we had that yeah, as that, part of views. That was actually and, in 6 too, yeah. Or, or it was sort of secretly in 6 and yes. views used it, but yeah. very few other modules used it because it was kind of pretty secret and we sort of made it in core and actually having core modules use it. And Basically, with Drupal 6, it was only views that knew about it. And, and then yes. right about when Drupal 7 was about to get released, everyone was like, oh, look, there's these really cool things that are already in Drupal 6. We should really expose them and make them better in Drupal 7. Which so the answer is to did, make better use of that? Because it's kind of confusing, <laughs> actually. Even for me, understanding it since it was in 6, it's a hard concept. Suggestions are. Yeah, I mean, I, it would, I think it would be great for us to figure out why it's a hard concept and make it less hard and, uh, and then use that. So yeah, if we have these standardized components, but if you do wanna, so book uh, navigation, for example, uses a standardized component, but if, you know, on your project, you want the book navigation thing to be different from, slightly different from the other one, that you have a way to do that. And the thing is, is right now, so the, the, the theme hook suggestions are based on like a particular string value inside a particular variable inside the template preprocess functions, right? So. I feel like it should be a property of this, you know, component, this standardized data structure, right? So you're basically um, given the uh, the sort of the, the purpose of this particular element, you know, the the the, the module that's that's wanting that's initially creating this data structure says, hey, you know, I'm the book module, I'm I'm using it for this purpose, and it specifies that in the property, so that. You don't have this issue of I have to override all, all links, right? Because I can look at just oh well the property you know the 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 suggestion property or whatever it's called for this new um, component it's it's right there, and it should be fairly easy to just do it sort of conditionally. Okay, I want to let him go this, but there, there's another problem with suggestions is that you have to know 
every possible thing that people might want as a suggestion, which is why views ends up with those crazy long template file names. So that's also kind of a, a hard thing with suggestions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, although one of the things in, in moving from the Drupal 6 to the Drupal 7 model, um, mm -hmm. In, in sort of moving the, what Views pioneered with Drupal 6, but getting into Drupal 7 core, uh, the, like with, in Drupal 6 with Views, suggestions were sort of defined by the caller. So the caller of, of yep. you know, theme would have to specify them. Uh, with Drupal 7, uh, you can do that, or you can specify them in a preprocess function. So right. if the module didn't think of all the possible different permutations of things you might want to specify, you know, the theme can implement a preprocess function to, to do that. Okay. Uh, that could I think it's that might help. Yeah. Yeah. I I think these concepts are still. There's something about the implementation, or maybe the concepts, that I think is still daunting to a lot of themers. Um, and I think it'd be. I'm really interested to learn more about what specifically that is and how we can make that more approachable. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Right. Two items. Uh, first, does anyone remember that we have template engines in Drupal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone try to use them in years? <laughs> yeah, those are actually broken and have been for at least two versions now. I propose we just get rid of that concept for, because it's Fortunately, I haven't upgraded my Drupal 5 site you know, from a Smarty yet, so it's. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, we've got that capability in there, but it doesn't actually work because everything is built on PHP template right now, and anything else is at best a third class citizen. I don't even know if you could do that in 7. So I think we'll make our lives easier just on implementation. If we say we, we're going to have one templating system, maybe it's an evolved PHP template, maybe we swap it out for something like Twig, I don't know. But we should let go of the idea of pluggable template engines because we've already done so, we just need to admit it. Yeah. Um, item two, whenever, you know, as we're coming up with these new models, we need to keep in mind the concept of affordance. Um, from usability. Basically, the idea is that doing it right should be the easy way to do it, and doing it wrong should require extra work. Right now, it is really not easy to, as a module developer, to know how to use Render API right. I'm not honestly sure I can say there is a right way to use Render API, but if there is, I haven't figured it out as a module developer, which means I cannot give themers something that they can work with because I don't know how. So whatever it is we do to solve this problem, we need to keep that in mind that module developers, by and large, don't know everything that a theme is going to want. And if we make them try and guess and do work to figure out what they need to do to make all the themers' life easy, mm -hmm. they're all going to do it wrong in different ways, and we're going to end up with Drupal 7 again. So we should try to keep that in mind, make it easy for module developers to do the right thing without having to think about it because otherwise they're not going to do the right thing because they're not going to think about it. Yeah, I, I, um, I agree the render API is, is not obtuse. Okay, yes. Um, and uh, it's, it's a complicated system and I don't, think, I don't think that there is a right way to do you know, anything in the render API. <laughs> um, I, I, don't, I honestly don't feel like the render API was, uh, is a good solution for the flexibility that we wanted. Um, um, that said, um, I, 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 I would love to, rather than thinking about how do we improve the render API, I think we should instead focus on how do we make a consistent API and then go and build that. And probably it doesn't include render API. <laughs> yeah. yeah to, is it okay if I go? Okay. So, yeah, to continue uh, ripping on Render API, just to give a, a prefix to, uh, uh, to my suggestion. Um, yeah, Render API, yeah, the, the problems with like uh, print versus render versus Drupal render versus Drupal render children versus uh -huh. hide and show. Yeah, and, uh, Drupal render versus Drupal render children and versus render, psh, whatever. Um, that uh, like we're putting a lot of onus on themers to know about uh, minute little differences between tons of different functions. But even, even before that, like, uh, uh, like in Drupal 6, we we're still you know, having themers needing to know a pretty good chunk of PHP. Uh, and I think that taking the idea of saying, OK, we can rewrite the theme layer again and make it more consistent this time with more functions or different functions um, just may 
be making a, for a really tough transitional period, um, and maybe maybe we wouldn't even succeed in our consistency. And so, uh, uh, I'd like to propose instead of doing something like that, actually moving towards less functions entirely, like less less function calls and less everything, and printing out things directly through a string replacement method, basically. So kind of like a theme engine, or like a like a. I don't want to say smarty, but I just did. So kind of <laughs> like that. <coughs> um, but besides render, or besides render APIs, um, problems with complexity, it also has major problems with memory consumption, just the sheer amount of the giant array that, takes that up we've memory. we've constructed, yeah. like printing out the page array, how Devel module conveniently lets you look at the page array that will always crash your browser or your server, because the page array is just so freaking big that it's impossible to actually render it out. Um, and besides memory, also security, that you are also, uh, themers are by far and large the um, biggest source of security holes. It's not really their fault, it's that they're being given, the onus is on them to be secure, you know, but they're the last layer before the page gets printed out and XSS holes just come out all over the place through, through the theme layer. So uh, we need a system that is more efficient memory-wise uh, and a system that doesn't put the onus on themers to be worried about security so much. Uh, and we don't want them to have to have so much technical yeah. knowledge. Yeah, so I, 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 the analogy there is sort of like we're, we're, we're um, giving the themers a, a loaded gun and telling them to ha you know, hammer this nail into a piece of wood and being, saying, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so to come, come around for all of that, uh, we made uh, uh, Carl and Jim Lampton and I made a proposal for a session, but unfortunately we idiotically made it a session and not a core conversation, which is why we're not talking about it. But uh, we conveniently already have a system that is pretty memory efficient, only renders out parts that are actually necessary, is nestable and is secure. Um, and that is the, maybe not the actual system that we have in place right now, but we have the methodology through tokens already that provide a nesting ability, that provide safe output, that provide the ability to print out pieces of individual objects without rendering the entire thing, and they don't require any functions or technical knowledge to use. Um, and so it's potentially, uh, um, if you would like to Google for DrupalCon token templates, I think that's what it was called, uh, e token template, yeah. <coughs> then uh, click the top one there. Um, and this is our proposal at least. Um, and there's some things that like tokens are not, tokens are not intended to be used like this. This is a, like we know that. Like the token system we have today is not intended to be used like this. But the fact is is that we could imitate right something like the token system to produce something like this and also have the convenience of the tokens that we already have like node and comment and things like that. Um, that could potentially, I mean we need something like hook variables that provides like per template tokens essentially, so we're not generating a million tokens for every template. But that could replace hook variables, uh, basically hook token info specific to a particular template, uh, plus throw in the existing tokens that we already have for things like nodes or comments or whatever. So, yeah. I, and it, I it, honestly don't think that, that I, this is that's kind of nice, I kind of like that. Um, as far as simplifying the actual TPLs. I don't think these are incompatible ideas either though. Right. Um, and then and that maybe this is something we can, we can tackle faster than the other bits. Um, it, it, you notice that, I, that the, the intro slide didn't say rethinking the render API for Drupal 8. It was just, I was about to type Drupal 8 and I'm like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> it yeah, probably and won't I, happen for that, but. I, actually funny about the theme engine's not actually working, it's kind of too bad because this would be a great theme engine. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, in Drupal 7, because of the render system, like we're gonna, it, memory wise, it's not gonna do a damn thing and that actually would make it a lot worse because now you've got this system plus the render API and the render API is already crazy. So I mean, you would need to commit to this because the memory problem of render API uh, is only going to be solved if you get rid of it entirely. Like if you, and, and this does other crazy things in that it flips around the page processing. So page tpl.php gets, doesn't know what's inside of it until it encounters the tokens. And then the page template actually decides what gets rendered inside of it. So when it gets to the regions, it says, oh, I need this region and this region. So you avoid the problem of like rendering regions or entire variables that never get used because they're never even generated until the token is encountered. 
So it would totally, I mean, this is, this, this approach would totally flip around everything about the way Drupal builds a page, where it would literally start at the top and go down rather than starting in the middle and coming back up and then going back down. So that's the way Render API works. Um, so, um, and Carl, I think, wanted to say something on it too, because he. Oh, go ahead. Um, Oh. What? The portion of the Drupal stuff is still PHP centric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, because we can take, yeah. It, it, so the with, comment was for the people watching the video was that this actually works on top of PHP template because uh, it just sort of replaces the actual TPL and so took a system on top of uh, render API and the ex existing PHP template system. Right, so that could make for some kind of conversion uh, process, like if we were going through and updating all the templates and all the core, we could have them both for a while at least. So, Carl, do you want to say something? Uh, <coughs> not specifically about this, but I have some kind of vague comments that I just want to bring up in terms of just the whole conversation here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think this is one idea. I think one thing we have to realize um, is that at the end of the day, we're concatenating strings together and like we're writing HTML and like this isn't, this doesn't have to be the most abstracted, beautiful, theoretically pure thing in the world. Um, I think when we go down that road of trying to make everything very theoretically intact, we end up with XHTML, which <laughs> like didn't really go anywhere. And then we had to, we had to revert to something more practical. Um, so I, that, there's nothing specific about that in general. I just want us to like maybe marinate on the idea that things don't have to be so beautifully abstract that like they're gonna cover every single use case. We're gonna have a component library that's gonna cover everything. I mean, there's, markup is gonna just exist in some strange fashion sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah I mean, HTML5 markup isn't, isn't necessarily perfectly clean already and it's not a perfectly abstract system. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, 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 you know the theme system that we developed that that you know produces that markup can't be it's it's got to be modeled sort of after HTML five as well. Sure. So um, uh, the 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 main reason why I want to see if we go to some sort of this component sort of common data structure is because of the when we built the theme system we built it saying okay I need this specific bit of markup right and then we built theme function to do that our 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 design model was based on specific chunks of HTML that we need. Let's build those specific chunks, right? And then when we tried to generalize, we our, our, the, the whole API was based on the wrong fundamental idea, right? So what I would like to have the API do is realize that we need to be able to alter these quickly enough um, that, you know, th that if we start with that, it'll get messy in the implementation deals I'm sure, in certain spots, and that's fine. But as long as the, we start with the, the common common idea, it hopefully will make the messiness less messy than starting with the wrong spot and then ending up with spaghetti. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the other thought I had was, um, was that I do like the idea of having something that is pluggable. Um, in terms of going from data to markup, because we have various audiences in Drupal. Drupal is a CMS, Drupal is a framework. We have users who want to get into, they want to start with Stark and they want to write every single piece of markup. We have other users who want to download uh, Omega and Delta and Context and use semantic views and do everything clicking. Um, I don't think that we're going to arrive at a system that's going to make everybody happy that does all those things for everyone, you know? Um, and so I think one of the comments I had on the issue that's on D.O is, uh, is that there's this kind of embedded assumption in a lot of the core modules that people are going to use render API. If you look at node show or node view multiple, it's got those hash parameters in there already that assumes like, oh, this is going to be sent to render. Um, so that's assuming that like, Render is what we're going to use, but maybe it's not what we're going to use. So, you know, I think uh, for the people who want the UI-driven stuff, 
Let's, you know, yes, let's provide a path for them, but let's make sure that that is separate and that can be, you know, sanctioned off from something that is pluggable for people who want to use maybe a different engine, maybe they want to use like a JavaScript based engine or something like that, they can do that. So I think like not only simplifying, but also like pulling apart those two things. Thanks. Thanks. I was uh, thinking about what uh, someone said earlier about um, one of our goals is to make Drupal easier to theme for people who are new to Drupal. One of the challenges with Drupal, and this has gotten a little better through the years, but it's, it's, it still is that the theme and the presentation and content are all intermingled together. And today, most Drupal sites would have a very hard time of just coming up with a new theme and being able to just launch the theme because so much presentational logic is put into module configuration. You have panels or context or uh, whatever, display uh, settings on nodes. And so if you wanted to do a redesign without a re-architecture of your site, you end up having to go in and not just develop the new theme, test it, and then launch it. Then you have to shut down the site or make a clone of it and then do a bunch of configuration changes. And I'd, I'd love to see us at least present a paradigm of understanding for the community that in thinking about uh, configuration, that uh, the configuration should focus on, uh, as far as the output goes, should focus on a semantic meaning, like is this block uh, s small or is it a side or is it article or navigation or whatever and have that in a Skinner-like access for people who really don't want to get into the TPL files, but anything that is specific to this theme's presentation maybe should be run through an extra layer so that um, the, the layout for these panels is specific to this theme. And if you're developing another theme, you can develop a different set um, so it's really kind of like, on the one hand, Fences and Skinner kind of combined into, you're getting output, you should be able to choose what is the semantic meaning of this output. That's not going to change from theme to theme. And then you have the presentational things that, that could be, hopefully, um, targeted more towards theme-specific implementation. Um, getting into the overriding the output is, you know, a lot of the times we're trying to override the output because the markup that's being generated is just sort of thrown in there um, and it generally defines the function that generated the markup instead of what kind of semantic meaning it has. And getting the output to focus on the semantic meaning first and then work backwards from there I think would be a big win for uh, improving the theming system and providing a frame of understanding for developers who are trying to think of what they're outputting. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, yeah, I, th I think that the components that we have to have to be sort of semantically based, not, not markup focused necessarily. So yeah, I, I agree with that, but definitely. Um, let's try to get through all three of you guys who are still up here, because I would love to hear from checks and these at the end of the line. So <laughs> quick. We got 15, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh wait, did we start at 2.45 or did we? Oh. I thought we started at 3.30. Oh, no, that was, no. Two, oh, you're right, we have 15 more minutes. Okay, no, no worries. Because I'm not going to be that fast. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, oh, I can talk fast. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I'm just going to proceed to throw up on you. Um, <clears throat> so this notion that, that, um, that Nate had up on screen here, uh, that's really very. The, the screen or the no, JSON? What, what oh, Nate yeah. and, and, and Jen and Carl had up there. Oh, this one. Yeah, that. Scroll down. Yep, I'll get to it in a second. Okay. So this this is very compatible with the whole notion of like blocks everywhere because we're injecting blocks with context. And guess what? I can generate tokens from context as long as they have tokens associated with them. And I'm responsible for sending the markup back for, say, every block. So I have tokens and markup and everything all sitting in one function. Mm -hmm. Like this is very easy to do from like a perspective of my initiative standpoint. Right. I really like how that looks. I really like like what it affords me. <laughs> I, I, I happen to agree that I, I actually quite like this a lot better than having PHP in the TPLs and, and I know that 
Um, if you ever get like Rasmus up here, he's like, use PHP because you know it's already a templating language and all that stuff, and you are reducing, um, you know, some from performance with having not having to parse the entire thing. But we already have you know token token parsing going on in various parts of the system already. Um, so um, I think the win of simplifying the TPL will outweigh the slight performance hit that we might have of not using PHP directly in this file. And I also hope that by simplifying the data structure and also with the blocks uh, everywhere or uh, initiative that we can streamline and make the stack run much quicker. Therefore, it's okay that we have a small performance hit of not using PHP at this time. And I think that uh, the the only question I would have, and I'll follow up with with the, the three of you, Carl and and, and uh, Jen and and, and uh, Nate, uh, is like looping inside TPLs. But other than that, this I really like this. Well, so, I'll watch the video definitely. Yeah. But I would like to talk to you like at DrupalCon, hopefully. <laughs> so to carry that thought a little. Or bit, Skype later. You know, <laughs> it's busy, crazy. To carry that thought a little bit further, the question then becomes, well, this stuff is sitting inside of objects right now with the way that I've got it architected, and I don't know how many people in the room are designer themer sorts, but like, is extending an object and changing a method that is purely that too much to ask? What was the, that, the blocks I showed you? You know, we, we just, we extend a block and we change its build function so that it's the code that you want with the tokens that you want. Yeah, I give you, I, 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 well, I can't give an example verbally probably that's sufficient enough. Um, so I'm just gonna kill that there and transition over to one other thing. There, <laughs> there once was a thing called Stark um, and we spent a lot of time working really hard on that in the Drupal 7 life cycle and I think it'd be really great if we could spend some time carrying that through all the other theme functions in the system and really reducing down what they output <clears throat> because we don't need all the wrapping that we've got right now. And a lot of the complaints from a wrapping perspective are actually contrib, and when we start talking about that, the things that people cite most are views and panels. Right, and but can, can I just say that, that from a contrib standpoint, a lot of times they're just following what they see in core, and the feed TPL is a horrible, horrible example that we've given to contrib space module developers. Sure. Uh, I, I think my point there, though, is like in relation to views and panels, you're talking about modules that are actively trying to support IE6, which we will not be doing in Drupal 8 plus. So, you know, that stuff is almost certainly going to get simpler anyways, and we might want to drop that example altogether because it is literally trying to support IE6 and won't have to from that point forward. So the here, divitis here. will go away. Thank God. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, as, as browsers get m more and better support for CSS3, it's much easier to have much more simplified markup, which I am so looking forward to. So Earl Miles will tell you that I uh, posted an issue one time called lots of cruft and panels flexible layout. It was on exactly that divitis. That didn't go over too well. <laughs> um, I had kind of a question uh, as relates to the whole Symphony 2 framework. Somebody told me that there was a templating system in Symphony 2. Is that going to affect this conversation in any measurable way? And the answer is no. So, uh, Chris or Larry want to jump in to answer that question because I don't actually. I I'm, okay. So, Symphony Two full stack framework uses a templating uh, engine called Twig, which is also written by uh, Fabien, but um, is not one of the components that the Web Services Initiative is planning to use. I do think we should consider using that as our templating engine. Whether or not we want to, I don't know, but I think it is worth considering and looking at that and giving it serious consideration. It's, I don't know it well enough to say. Yes. I think it is worth looking at and asking the question, is that the easiest way to resolve these problems? I don't know if it is, but I think it is worth looking at. And, and actually, as James pointed out, um, it, ha it shares some similarities to this token concept. So. First of all, the stock concept if you have been long enough into PHP, then this reeks of smarty, and we know where that leads, nowhere good. Uh, you already mentioned looping, and yes, that's where this tanks. This is the problem what you have, is that eventually somewhere in your template, maybe not here, but in the one that renders the node links, we'll need to have loops and then what are you going to do? You are going to invent your own language on top of PHP to loop 
this is why we were using PHP template for so long, because why do you want to implement another language on PHP? Now, talking of uh, uh, languages implemented in PHP, we actually made this mistake, it's called a render API. What I recently realized that it's basically a declarative language written in PHP. So the mistake we made is that although the data structure is recursive, because HTML is recursive. So the data structure is probably could and should stay, but we sh absolutely should not mix the actual processing things into the data definition. So those things need to separate, you know? Just because you have a bunch of links, you don't uh, want to put pre-render and everything uh, into that. You just say that, these, this is, these are links, this is the age ref, this is the title. Uh, we actually uh, mixed uh, data uh, with presentation, which we shouldn't have. So, uh, and then the problem that we have with the current system is that it's absolutely impossible to figure out where something is being changed. There's a, that's, that's, literally impossible uh, unless you have uh, a debugger which has a watch uh, but even Zen debugger cannot do that pretty well. So uh, on the other hand, on the other hand what we have currently and we should not throw out the baby with the bathwater is an incredible flexible system. The two are opposite. If you can change a uh, something everywhere, then you will have a very hard time figuring out where it got changed. If it is only the data and not the logic, it's gonna be easier. So, so a few things that I uh, suggested as I, uh, to Alex is that we need to move to OOP so that if you change something, then it's explicit. Then you are calling a method and you can sit on the method, put a breakpoint on it or just a print and so you see who is changing you, one. Two, as I said, I don't think this is workable. I don't think we can get rid of PHP out of the uh, templates. That's unlikely to work. Uh, third, uh, exactly because HTML is recursive, separating, templating at an arbitrary cut of you know block level, field item, uh, region, page, I think that this should be the same, pretty much as the same day and now. Uh, just once again, it should be separated as, as basically what the basics of web applications should be that you don't mix data with presentation, so we should re-separate that. This is all I want to say and also, what I also want to say is that I don't think that anything we have currently is salvageable. Uh, we need to throw out. And we need to restart it absolutely because it uh, just grew, 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 grew. Mm. This is how you got to the wiring diagram that you have there. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you how we got there. Oh, I know uh, how we got there. Uh, because <laughs> I was there too. We had form <laughs> API. We had form API, right? We yeah. needed, uh, that was good. And then we realized that there are things which are not forms, they need to be done in render time, so we added pre-rendered. In parallel, we have realized that we need pre-process for uh, the themes, and when the two collided in seven, you got this. It was completely good intentions, but by now, this is just not salvageable. This is completely un unsalvageable. So I think that we need to restart absolutely from scratch uh, with uh, re -ar write I an architecture, come up with an architecture and implement it. I said this to a few people here that I believe that in Drupal 8, we cannot release Drupal 8, uh, we just cannot with uh, this current system where you have these arrays of doom uh, of uh, hash properties on one hand, which makes Drupal hard to learn, and on the other hand, you have the OOP system, which is going to be very alien to a lot of Drupal people. So you basically are two paradigms which are hard to different people. And so who is going to be able to learn that system? So I think that we cannot uh, release eight without completely rewriting this.
Th that, that is awesome. I completely agree with a lot of what you said. I have so many, so many comments to make on that, but can I just start with, um, can somebody please make me a t-shirt that says Drupal 7 and the Arrays of Doom? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah. I'm Vic, terrified to have to follow <laughs> that. Um, I'm actually going to turn around and look at the audience for this one. Consider two different audiences. People who want to change the look and feel of their site by pushing buttons, and people who want to change the look and feel of their site by writing HTML and editing templates. Which of those is more important for us to serve? Both is not an answer. Who says button pushers? Hands. Because they are fundamentally different use cases, and one system cannot serve both equally well. It's, then you have a broken admin. <laughs> we, we don't want to say you don't matter, but saying we cannot get away with saying we are primarily targeting one or the other of these. I don't personally care which one it is, but we need to decide. Because then you end up with the templates that, you know, like the, the template, the table template, which is a template file. <laughs> you know, I, I just, just want to see a show of hands. Of those two, we actually only have like both is not an answer that we can support. We have been trying to support both for years and have failed at both of them. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the main thing we want to serve is we want our settings that we write in code, especially in the visual layer, when we hand our site to you know, the content admin. For, and we've got enterprise sites that run on this. You know, they want to change the color of something. Why can't they have a button that changes our settings that we wrote? You know, where we can still go in and modify it, but then they can add their thing on top of it. This is almost, this is almost starting to sound like features implementation, which I think is actually an interesting way to go. <laughs> which we're now trying to replace with something better in Drupal 8 called CMI. So I, if people keep saying both. I want you to think about that question. You cannot serve everyone equally in all cases. Drupal so I'll give, is a I'll bad give, fit for yeah. certain use cases. Which of these is more important? I don't, don't have the answer. Let me, let me give one concrete, <clears throat> let me give, uh, ask one concrete question uh, uh, related to that. So should the, should the site builder or content editor be able to, through the UI, choose whether something is an H1, an H2, or an H3? I'm, yeah. I'm seeing mostly nods. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's but, uh, This is on yes, a, but not on necessarily a everything. Sorry. A different topic, but I wanted to. Uh, I think it was Nate mentioned something about security. Uh, I'm on the security team, and I think. Um, I mean, I totally agree that that our our theming system is dangerous for themers, and I don't think we can expect the themers to fix it. I mean, like buffer overflows weren't fixed until we started using managed code, where it became impossible to create them, and we're not going to fix cross-site scripting until it becomes impossible to create those holes and. I, I don't know how we do it. The best, like, I know Ruby on Rails has an H function, and I think basically the, you create a cultural convention that, like, print is like, oh my God, why would you, no, don't use print. And you instead you have to use H or, or check plane or whatever it is. I, I don't know what, but I think, it, I think if we can, if, the new, if this new theme layer can incorporate smarter filtering, I think that gives us a huge advantage security wise. Yeah. If, if our elements are, are objects, um, I feel like we can make, it's possible we can make that sort of invisible, right? If the, the things that we're printing are, are objects, couldn't? Just for the video the listeners, it was, dep depends on how fine-grained the system is, and then Ray Larry's gonna say something else. Uh, he's asking uh, who here, a show of hands for who went to DrupalCon Zeged. Say this after people wave me to the microphone. 
Rasmus Leerdorf, creator of PHP, in Drup that DrupalCon Zeged showed us an example of another framework that uses a function call for every single HTML element, which means that it is not possible to write invalid HTML. It also is 10 times slower than Drupal is today because of just how much indirection you have there. So yeah, don't get too fine-grained with your objects or you end up with that. Yeah. No, I, okay, sure. I think we're technically out of time, so we're sort of in that middle break zone. At some point, we might be kicked out, but go ahead. So the reason <laughs> Keep going until we're kicked out. <laughs> so the reason that I keep saying that we should support both um, is that if we have a good separation between the data and the out. That if we have a good separation between the data, it's so weird hearing your voice, um, between the data and the output, then the clicky interface can be a theme, and a templating system can be a theme, and that all kind of comes out. So it, it, I think we're thinking about it kind of in the wrong way in, if we're thinking that we can't support both. Because at a certain point you're dealing with data, at a certain point you're dealing with output, and there's like, I'm not saying support both like in the same space maybe, that you would have to make that choice. And maybe, you know, there's clicky interface modules and there's template interface module. Um, and that there's certain things that modules might have to do to support clicky interface, right? You need to lean into the microphone. Yeah, okay. so that there might be certain things that, like, would modules would have to support to support a clicky interface. But if you allowed it to be more um, separated, it wouldn't be as big of a sort of worry anymore, right? Yeah, uh, I think the problem you're describing is that halfway templates aren't working. We've got templates that are kind of human readable. We can kind of give them to people who don't know Drupal, and they can kind of understand what's happening. And we can build an admin interface that can kind of modify that markup and can kind of customize it through button clicking. But we don't really get markup that is actually human readable by people who don't know Drupal. I should say on the template side, once it's rendered, they can read it. But on the template side, they can't read our templates. And uh, button clicking can't fully modify our templates. On the topic of uh, one, um, one PHP function for all elements, I was just about to send out kind of a joke tweet. You know, Jacine in her, her blog post mentioned there are only 109 HTML tags. Why do we have hundreds or even thousands of template files. Well, you could th boil it down to there's just the opening caret, there's the element, there's Drupal attributes, there's the contents, and there's the closing tag. If we wanted to get that granular, we could. And it would be easier to build an all button clicking interface to do that. But we wouldn't have templates that would be human readable. So uh, I think that whoever was at the mic last was, was getting to the idea that we could have two templating systems, one that is designed to be human readable, human editable through TPL files, and one that is designed entirely for button clicking. And maybe that is the way to do both, but I think what Larry is saying is that these halfway templates, the kind of templates that uh, the semantic views module from Drupal 6 worked with, those were hard for me to edit because they had lots of button clicking options, but I also occasionally needed to go into the TPL file and it was hard to, to discern what should be the realm of button clicking and what should be the realm of editing a TPL file. Yep, so what he said and what he asked, Laurie's, uh, Laurie's question actually was an answer, it wasn't uh, a question. Uh, what he answered is that I have expressed my doubts of how can you have uh, uh, different templating on different levels. What Laurie says is that the cutoff is what you can do on the admin side. So what you have basically, and that's what he said, is that you do need to have two, two kinds of templating, and one is the layout that uh, uh, Chris is going to come up with, and which is you, you can control from the admin interface, and that's definitely we need to have a different way to put together because that is going to be written by Drupal. Inside that, we need the templating, we need templating which is going to be written by humans. Uh, this, me, this means that more or less 
at least by default, we have something like a grid system. So we basically have a probably a pluggable layout engine, and we have a pluggable templating engine, which only comes in once you have the layout in place. And I think that's what you, uh, Alex said as well uh, at one point, that you will have something different up down to the block level and inside the blocks. And that's probably what we need to do to facilitate this, this means, of course, that you will not be able to button press to the level where you can uh, change whether a heading is H1, H2, or H3, because that's not layout. But that's fine, that's fine. If you want to do that, you can uh, plug in something like contemplate or something like that. It's, we need to make a cut. We need to make a compromise. This is what core can do, make it pluggable and walk. Sounds and good to me. And I, I'm, I, 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 I hate to cut you off here, but I mean, we really, uh, we only got like seven minutes until the next core conversation, and what Roy is giving, and I don't want to uh, encroach on them. We'll need to get, let people sit down and get set up, and we're going to have to cut it there. I'd, I would love to hear more comments from people if you want to come up to me afterwards, and, and, or next day, or whatever. Um, this is a continuing conversation that we need to have as a community. Uh, I'm just going to tack one last thing on. <laughs> Everything that the Chicks and everyone has el else has just said is come full circle back to my first comment. And the whole point of that was, yes, we can do all of those things and we could probably make those human readable templates identifiable in such a way that the button clickers can get at them and utilize them. That's the point, but yes, what, what everyone else said. Uh, so somebody suggested maybe we could create a groups.drupal.org group about this idea? I don't, I don't know. But what? Blacks? Sure, yeah, okay. L l yeah, let's just do that. Okay. So we'll be posting about where we're going to continue this conversation when we figure it out.